So the point of this build was to create an all-in-one enclosed system that incorporated an Xbox One and a normal PC into a singular system within the Cooler Master Mastercase 5 Pro. And in the spirit of Cooler Master's Make It Yours philosophy, we wanted to incorporate a whole system closed loop water cooling setup with it as well. And I want to give a huge thank you to Cooler Master South Africa for sponsoring this project and allowing us to create this awesome system. Without them, this would not at all be possible. So come on along for the journey of how this machine came to be. This video is brought to you by Game Arena. Located in Centurion, South Africa, Game Arena is an esports organization with high end Skylight gaming desktops available for daily use, as well as numerous tournaments being held throughout the month. Click the link in the video description to learn more. So, once we had the idea for this system, it simply became a matter of figuring out could this be done at all? And if it could be done, could it be done well? So, we did what reasonable people would do in this situation. We cracked open an Xbox One to get a good look at everything inside and see what we had to work with. Disassembly was pretty simple, requiring minimal tools, and there's a pretty helpful guide over at iFixit.com, so within a few minutes we had the guts of the Xbox laid out before us. However, while we knew what each of the components did, we didn't know which ones were necessary for the Xbox to function since we wanted to take a minimalist approach to putting the Xbox in the master case and only include what is absolutely necessary since we could have just as easily slapped a complete Xbox in there in the master case as is and called it a day. But figuring all of this out came at a later stage and we first needed to find out if we could actually water cool the dang thing. And after a quick bit of research, we discovered that generic GPU water box can fit perfectly on the Xbox One's AMD APU. And armed with that knowledge, we had to acquire all of the water cooling components necessary for the whole loop. So we headed on over to Titan Ice in Pretoria and spoke with Vessel, who was helpful and knowledgeable in making sure we got all of the things that we needed to make sure that this project was actually going to work. So thank you Vessel and Titan Ice for all of your help, we really appreciate it with this project. So moving on to the specifications of what's actually in the PC part of the system. We have an ASUS Z170K motherboard with an Intel Core i7-6700K processor, 16 gigabytes of 2400 megahertz Corsair Vengeance LPX memory, an ASUS GTX 980 reference graphics card, an OCZ ARC 100 240 gigabyte SSD, and a one terabyte Western Digital Blue hard drive for storage. It's a decent setup, but came with a slight challenge. While it's not too difficult to mount a CPU water cooling block, we wanted to mount the GPU block on the Reference 980 while still being able to keep the reference design and not hack off parts like, I don't know, Linus Tech Tips. So we wanted to keep it this way for two reasons. One, we like the look of the reference design and two, the blower fan on the card would help cool the VRAM with the water block installed. So this meant that we had to break out the Dremel and make a few alterations to the GPU itself. Firstly, we had to widen the mounting portion of the graphics card since the stock heatsink was slightly slimmer than the generic water block we bought for the 980. Once we opened up that space a bit and then replaced the thermal pads because we uh, incidentally got metal shrapnel all over them, we then mounted the block and had to figure out a way to get the pipes out of the card since there's no proper opening for piping. The simplest solution would have been to have the fittings of the water block facing out the side of the card and open up the space where the GeForce GTX logo exists. But since we were attempting to maintain the aesthetic of the card, we decided to have the fittings face the I.O. of the card and bending the tubing at some tough angles, adding a couple of 90 degree fittings and having the tubing come out just in front of the illuminated logo. While the tightest bend coming out of the card is slightly kinked, it's still adequate enough that the water was able to flow well through the system. Following this, we mounted the CPU block. No tricky work there. Then came installing the 240 millimeter radiator. Due to the way that the master case is laid out, we mounted the radiator on the inside of the front panel with the exhaust fans pulling air through the rad. Then we put the pump reservoir combo into the top five and a quarter inch drive bays and hooked that up to the loop. And finally came the piece de resistance. 
the Xbox One. We opted to keep the bottom portion of the metal Xbox chassis due to the ease of having the I.O. pre-installed and therefore not having to custom fabricate a mounting mechanism for the Xbox's motherboard. We spray painted it black to help it fit with the look of the master case and then got to installing the VRAM heat sinks on each of the little chips and then installed the GPU water block on the APU. The plan was to direct the tubing through the slots where the Xbox's optical drive is supposed to go, since we decided that digital copies of the games are is just an easier solution to have. The orientation of the Xbox chassis allowed us to easily direct the tubing, and then we were in business with the entire loop being done. To mount the Xbox, we simply screwed it in through the chassis portion that separates the main compartment of the master case from the basement. For the power brick of the Xbox, we hot glued it to the removable top of the Master Case 5 Pro, which allows for easy plugging and unplugging of the cable. And we routed the cable through the back of the case to the Xbox itself, bringing all of the components together in this system. So our custom system loop starts at the pump goes to the radiator, then over to the Xbox, then to the GPU, then to the CPU, and finally back to the pump. With the loop fully connected, we poured our water into the system and got everything flowing. The computer system was functioning properly, the loop was full of water, and the pump was doing its thing. Then came the moment of truth, turning on the Xbox. And while I wish I could say that it turned on instantly, Alas, that did not happen. The power bricks LED for the Xbox flashed from orange to white for a brief second and then went back to orange and then nothing happened. And no matter how many times I hit the power button or tried to do anything, nothing happened. And none of the panic that ensued from that moment is caught on camera, but here's a dramatic reenaction. So during the process of trying to install the Xbox, I had accidentally broken the SATA connection on the Xbox's hard drive. I wasn't sure how that ended up happening, but it was the first thing that we suspected even though we appeared to have been able to hot glue it back into place. Testing the hard drive with the PC revealed that the, that the hard drive was actually functioning properly, so that wasn't it. We then decided to literally plug everything back into the Xbox to see if it was necessary for it to boot. However, even with every portion of the console attached, we still had the issue of the power brick flashing to white for a moment and then turning off. And after some Google research, it appeared that there were two possibilities. The power brick was being stupid and would eventually turn back on, or we broke the console. Not willing to let the latter idea be conceived as reality, I decided to give it a break and come back to it after an hour or so. And after letting my son be the one to try to get it to work, as if by some miracle of God, the system simply turned on. No explanation for me as to what the difference was, but it worked. And now we have a fully functional, all-in-one, custom liquid-cooled Xbox PC hybrid. The Xbox One and PC operate independently of each other, but the main purpose of this rig will be to run the Xbox through the Windows 10 app whenever we want to play since there's no simple way to hook up an external monitor via HDMI with the way that the I.O. is positioned. So stay tuned for some update videos on this build documenting the thermals during stress testing and the like, but preliminary tests show that everything is being cooled effectively and that the system is actually working. And again, I want to give a big shout out to Cooler Master South Africa for sponsoring this build project. We really appreciate the opportunity to work with the Master Case 5 Pro and to make it ours, to make it this awesome machine that it is. So I guess that's it for this video. Press the like button if you enjoyed it, or you can dislike it if you want to nitpick how we did or didn't do certain things. 
Let me know down in the comments what else you want to see us make our own and work on. And I'm super keen to hear what you guys have to say and what you guys want, want to see done. Because it's certainly a lot of fun doing build projects like these, even though it's a lot of work. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.